Today, we will boost Kyrian Sovereignty's damage to great numbers. Look at how much damage it deals on a single hit. We will cover two builds, each pushing the skill to its limits. A safer build with a solid damage boost and a lot of damage negation. And a high risk high reward build with over 200% more damage. Let's get to it. I recently ran a poll on the channel asking you which build you would like to see next. And over a thousand of you chose this. So here we are. Unlike my other videos, you build craft to make the weapon deal more damage. This thing just deals an absurd amount of damage off the bat. It is insane. Let's talk about this bad boy. The Carrion Sovereignty. This Ash of War transforms your weapon into a magical greatsword, which you slam down in a powerful vertical slash, followed by a second circular swing for extra damage. There are two ways to use this skill. And Charged is cast faster and deals decent damage. Charged is cast slower but deals 32% more damage. The FP cost of this skill is pretty manageable. With 30 FP for the initial cast and 12 for the follow-up, you can spam this quite a bit before needing to refill your FP. One of the best things about this skill is its stance damage. Fully charged, it deals 48 stance damage with an additional 45 from the follow-up. That is 93 stance damage total. To put that into perspective, some bosses like Malekith and Godfrey who have low poise can be staggered into one combo. That is nuts. The damage from carry and sovereignty scales with intelligence, weapon level, and infusion affinity. To maximize damage, you will want to focus on intelligence only, fully upgrading the weapon and infusing it with magic. What's really interesting is that the weapon you use does not affect the damage of carrying sovereignty. However, the weapon class does affect your hyper armor, which determines how likely you are to be interrupted while casting. The lighter, the less hyper armor you get. So while the damage stays the same across different weapons, your weapon choice will affect how durable you are during the casting. For this reason, great swords, curved swords, and heavy thrusting swords are far superior. Also, whether you're two-handed or one handing the sword, it has no effect on the damage. With this information, we are going to look at two builds today. One that is safer with a lot of damage boost and damage negation, friendly for new players, and another that prioritizes pure raw damage to nuke bosses with a convenient playstyle. But here is the thing, do not think of these as two separate builds. They are super easy to switch between, just by swapping a couple pieces. I highly recommend watching both parts to understand the differences and how you can adapt different situations. Let's start with the first build. For the right weapon, use the Claymore. It is a great sword which gives us the highest hyper armor while casting. 118. Upgrade it to plus 25, apply the Carrion Sovereignty Ash of War, and change the affinity to magic. The Claymore is super easy to obtain. It can be found in the Castle Morn in Weeping in Peninsula. Just hug the right wall after entering the main courtyard. You'll likely already have it. The Carrion Sovereignty can be acquired from a teardrop scarab inside a cave southwest from the Cathedral of Manus Mateer. For the left weapon, use the Carrion Regal Scepter to cast out your sorceries. It can be easily obtained from Renala's Remembrance, so you already likely have it as well. In case you don't, use the Astrologer's Staff. It is easy to get, has high scaling, and is purchasable from the Nomadic Merchant in Lyurnia for just 800 runes. For the armor, before defeating Rolana, use the Carrion Knight Set. It has great drip, solid resistances, and it is easy to find. You can find it in Raya Lucaria's Academy, next to the zombies worshipping this statue. After you defeat Rolana, use her set. It has similar stats, slightly better, and still looks great. It is available from Enya in the round table after you defeat Rolana. For the talismans, use Shard of Alexander to boost skill damage by 15%, obtained by finishing Alexander's quest, Godfrey's Icon to increase the damage of the charged skill by 15%. It is obtained by defeating Godfrey the Grafted, found in Golden Lineage Evergale. Magic Scorpion Charm to increase magic damage by 12%, obtained by giving Silvus the Ember Starlight after Silvus tells you about his scheme. This one you can lock yourself out of. The Ritual Sword Talisman to raise damage by 10% when HP is at a 
Maximum, located in the Lux Ruins in a chest after defeating the Demi Human Queen. For the Physic, easy choice, the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier for 20% boost to magic damage for 3 minutes. It is dropped by the Avatar in the Northeastern Lyrania. The Opaline Heart Tier to increase all damage negation by 15% for 3 minutes. It is dropped by the Avatar north of the 4th Farad in Kaelin. For the Sorceries, use Terra Magica to increase your damage by 22% for 30 seconds in the boss fights. It is found in the Crystal Cave Dungeon. Take the elevator behind the Crystallion's bosses. This leads to a tower inside the Academy, on top of which is a chest containing the spell. Use Night Comet to fire Invisible Magic Comet. Bosses will not see it and will not be dodged. It is great for out clear or in boss fights in between sovereignty hits. It is found in Celia, Town of Sorcery in Kaelid, found in a chest in the central section of the town. Use the Carrion Slicer, a cheap, reliable, and can be even your primary spell for exploration or boss fights. Give the Royal House Scroll to Marielle, and it can be purchased for 1,500 runes. Finally, use Zamor's Ice Storm to proc Frostbite on bosses, making them take more damage for a good duration. It is found on a corpse in Zamor's Ruins in the Mount Top of the Giants. For an easy 20% damage negation, use a Boiled Crab before every boss fight. For the stats, spec to 60 Vigor, 30 Mind, 30 Endurance, 16 Strength, 13 Dex, and 80 Intelligence. For the Great Rune, equip Morgoth's Great Rune for an increase of 25% to your health, giving you a big health cushion. The build overall is balanced with solid defenses, versatile spells, and great damage. You can deal substantial damage while staying protected. The build also includes versatile sorceries for exploration and boss fights, making it a well-rounded choice for both offense and defense. Let's shift gears to the second build. This build is not about the highest damage, it is about the highest damage that is convenient as much as possible. For the right weapon, use the Claymore, upgrade to plus 25, apply the Carrion Sovereignty, and change the affinity to magic. For the left weapon, use the Azure's Glintstone Staff for a faster sorcery casting. However, it increases FP cost of sorceries by 20%. Luckily, it does not affect the Ash of War casting. It is found in Raya Lucaria's Academy, or you can just use the Astrologer's Staff, same as the first build. For the armor, use the Rakshasa set. It boosts the damage by 8% it has solid resistances. It is found in the Eastern Nameless Mausoleum after defeating Rakshasa. For the Talismans, use Shroud of Alexander to boost skill damage by 15%, Godfrey's Icon to increase damage of Char's skills by 15%, Magic Scorpion Charm to increase magic damage by 12%, and Blade of Mercy to raise damage by 20% after a critical hit. Found in the Scorched Ruins at the starting area of the DLC. For the Physic, use the Magic Shrouding Crack tier for 20% boost to magic damage for 3 minutes. Pair it with the Bloodsucking Crack tier for another 20% damage boost for 3 minutes. It's dropped by the Furnace Golem in the Ruins of Ente. For the Sorceries, use Terra Magica to increase your damage by 22%. Use Night Comet to fire Invisible Magic Comets. Use the Carrion Slicer, cheap and reliable spell. And use Zamor's Ice to proc Frostbite on bosses, making them take more damage for a good duration. For the stats, same as the first build, spec to 60 Vigor, 30 Mind, 30 Endurance, 16 Strength, 13 Dex, and 80 Intelligence. For the Great Rune, equip Morgoth's Great Rune for an increase of 25% of health. This build has high damage boss nuking capabilities that prioritizes raw power over defense. It is perfect for dudes looking to add a little bit of damage without making it too broken where it's one-shotting bosses. There you have it, two builds centered around the powerful carrying sovereignty Ash of War. Whether you want a safer approach or just want to nuke bosses, these builds have got you covered. Let me know what build you want to see next. I'll do more polls in the channel and go for the top ones. Meanwhile, if you want to see the coolest weapon in my opinion that came out with the DLC, check out this video. Bye. Bye. Bye.